Good morning, Kingsley community. This is Pastor Colleen Weirman coming to you with another daily devotion. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my tools so that I'm backwards. I don't know why I have to do that now while I'm live. <laughs> Zuckerberg, the chosen. 40 days with Jesus. Let's see. I'm going to go on to day five. It's entitled Desperate. Mm. Okay. Again, this is book two. I'm not going to do every day. Go buy it. Good book. Desperate. John 4, verse 50. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. Great story. The writers of The Chosen write, Desperation makes us do unconventional things. It prompts us to seek answers in places we wouldn't normally go and elicit help from people we wouldn't normally talk to. It chucks pretense out the window. It makes us vulnerable. Desperation forces us to see life through a different lens and is often the very thing that drives us to Jesus. In, chap in John chapter 4, there's a royal official who's all too familiar with that kind of reckless desperation. His son is sick, dying. The second he hears that Jesus is back in Cana, he takes off from, from Capernaum, which was a 20-mile hike. That's a lot of time to think and worry and fear the worst. When he finally gets to Jesus, he begs him to heal his son. I, the writer Kristen, understand this parent because I was this parent. Pleading for the healing of my daughter is the very thing that drove me to Jesus. Like the royal official, I didn't actually know Jesus, but I'd heard about what Jesus could do. I grew up in a church, learned the age-appropriate versions of Bible stories, and glued and glittered the corresponding crafts. <laughs> I was always aware that Jesus performed miracles. I just never cared until I needed one. As many of you can attest, nothing will bring you to the end of yourself faster than a sick or special needs child. This was the journey on which the Lord saw fit to take my husband and me, and it worked. Entrusting us with this fragile human with severe cranial deformities and neurological damage forced us to see life through a different lens. Pretense was no longer an option. My heart couldn't have been more vulnerable. Lots of time was wasted thinking and worrying and fearing the worst. I became acutely aware of my need for Jesus. Suddenly, I couldn't get to Jesus fast enough. No fancy prayers were involved. I cried out to Jesus and pled with, pleaded with raw, often unintelligible words that resembled, please, Lord, just please. I imagine the royal official's plea didn't sound much different. When he asked for help, Jesus gave a seemingly off-topic response. He said, unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, you will never believe. But Jesus wasn't speaking to the royal official. He was addressing the crowd that had gathered around them. He wanted to see if Jesus, they wanted to see if Jesus would do the same signs and wonders he did in Jerusalem. They were just curious, not desperate. Incidentally, they didn't see any miracles that day, but guess who did? Jesus told the royal official to go home and that his son would live. He took Jesus at his word and departed. That's it. That's how it all went down. And that's exactly what all of us desperate people are supposed to do. Take Jesus at his word. Did Jesus heal my daughter instantaneously? No. But he never told me he would. Instead, he miraculously healed her over the course of several years, touching many lives in the process, namely mine. It kept me vulnerable and on my knees, which caused me to do the most unconventionally beautiful thing of all, surrender my life to Jesus and learn to take him at his word. So if you're going through a desperate time, just like this Roman official was, he came to Jesus, he pled to help his, he pleaded to Jesus, and Jesus says, go home, your son will live. And remember, it's a 20 mile hike, so he's got 20 miles back to um, see if his son had lived, but he believed. And so sometimes we wanna see this miraculous sign and we miss the many miracles along the way. The many miracles of maybe your spouse or your loved one or your child isn't healed instantly, but along the way, you see people praying for them that you've never even met. You've uh, seen people visiting them that you haven't talked to for 30 years. Um, you have strangers come in and pray. You have strangers praying all over the world or all over the city or all over the state, whatever it is. And it changes you. Because remember, prayer doesn't change God. Prayer changes us. And so as this woman prayed, you could see that um, 
Her daughter wasn't instantaneously healed, but along the way, her daughter taught her many lessons about how to get on her knees and pray to Jesus. So if we think um, we want to see miracles instantaneously, that's usually not how it happens, although it can. Um, a lot of times it's in the time of waiting where we see Jesus' healing hand and touch and comfort and peace. And if you've never experienced that, um, get to know Jesus. Plead to him like this woman did. Please, Lord, just please help my child. Help me to see the miracles. Help me every day to see how you are working in my life. Until people stop and really think about how Jesus is working in their life or in the lives of others, um, they're just going to keep writing it off as coincidence or they're not even going to see those miracles. There's miracles everywhere. It might be another day that your loved one lives long enough to tell you they're sorry or for you to say you're sorry. You know, I've seen people say, well, God didn't heal my friend with cancer. But in those last moments, um, we forgave each other. Or the dad who, you know, abused a child and was on his deathbed and the son said, I forgave you. And it's exactly what both of them needed. So these little miracles happen all the time. Um, and uh, we just have to be aware of them. We have to have eyes and ears open to see it. So maybe your child is a special needs child or um, they've got an illness or you've got a parent with an illness and it doesn't look like it's going to get better. Look for the miracles along the way. They're there. Prayer focus. Thank God for his sovereign mercy and that he weaves desperation into our stories. Ask him to increase your faith and help you to take him at his word. Praise him for being your comfort and your healer, and for meeting you when where, when you are most vulnerable. So moving forward, do you really know Jesus, or have you heard only heard about what he can do? Do you struggle to take him at his word? So, you know, the psalmist writes perfectly about what Jesus did and does in our lives. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and that doesn't mean I'm dying. That means those valley times when life is going well and you're on the mountaintop, and when life is down in the valley, when things are uncertain and you don't know if it's going to come out good or not, um, I will feel fear no evil because you are with me. And then he says, your rod and your staff, that's his word and his promises. So read his word and know that Jesus is with you. How has desperation driven you to Jesus? What were the circumstances and how did Jesus respond? Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. That's Jesus' word. How does knowing his near, he's near in desperate times change the way you experience him? So, and I think it takes time to um, stop and not panic and instead get down on your knees and from that gut, just cry out to Jesus to help, to show you that he's there. Um, you might not get a miraculous healing, but you'll know that he's with you, and he'll show you these little miracles if you stop and take a look. And sometimes we have to look backwards after the situation. We pray see unceasingly, um, meaning all the time, through it all, and we look back and we can see where God was working and is continuing to work. So know the promise is true. He will be with you. He will work through you. He will work through others. And it could be a simple note that someone says, a simple Facebook prayer that someone lifts up for you. Um, know that God doesn't leave you. So I hope this was helpful for you today. And I will see you back here um, Monday. In the meantime, we're finishing up the Grudge Sermon Series this Sunday at 9 and 11 in person and 9 a.m. live stream right here. And we are learning how to forgive the hardest person to forgive of all. And that is ourselves. We're learning how to forgive ourselves. It'll be good. So join me right here, nine, in person. We'll do some communion. So if you want to have um, bread and some kind of juice, doesn't matter what kind, with you, you can go ahead and as I do communion, we'll go ahead and lift that up and then I'll consecrate it, um, meaning I'll pray over it, ask God to bless it, um, and you can take communion at your home. So that'll be kind of cool. Normally I do it the first of the month, so the next time we take communion will be first of November, first Sunday in November. And I believe that's All Saints Day, too. So we'll be recognizing loved ones. So we'll get that out on our Facebook page if you'd like to have it, your name of your loved one who's passed away this year or even years prior. I'd like them lifted up. And I have the kids ring a bell for each name lifted up. 
then go ahead and send that to, um, go to our website, kingsleymethodistchurch.com, and you can put that, go to prayers, and then go ahead and say, I'd like my loved one's name listed. And if it's hard to pronounce name, type it out the way it's typed, spelled, and then phonically spell it for me. And then leave your contact information in case I got to call you and say, how do you pronounce this name? And we'll lift them up. And that's the 1st of November. Otherwise, this Sunday, 9 and 11, after this Sunday, starting October 17th, we will just have 9 a.m. in person, but we will always have 9 a.m. live stream. So I hope you can join me one of the ways um, this Sunday so you can learn how to forgive yourself. And then after that, we'll start with The Chosen. Now remember, this Saturday, October 9th at 6 p.m., we have a potluck. Bring a bag of chips. Don't bring anything because there's always tons of food because we're Methodists. We like to eat. And um, 7 o'clock, we're going to show Season 1, Episode 1, at the church. So if you want to come, 113 Blair Street, bring the kids. We'll have somebody, you know, it's all upstairs in the fellowship hall, so kiddos can play in the nursery. You know, we might have something for the kiddos to do, a craft or something while we watch the um, episode. It's only 50 minutes long, so it's a kickoff. If you can't make it, don't worry. Starting October 17th, that Sunday, I'll be showing clips of the movie throughout the um, sermon. So there you go. That's all I know. Have a good weekend.